This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, King's High School raises funds to get students to Africa. The toxic algae alert for the Matara River is lifted after testing. And the UNESCO Chair of Refugee Integration engages an intensive crowd in Dunedin. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Melissa Barton. Four Kings High School students are travelling to Tanzania and Malawi next July to conduct conservation research. The boys are counting fish species in Lake Malawi and will also be spending time at a Tanzanian school. Roselle Lebone has more. These Kings High School students are embarking on an expedition to the Great Rift Valley in Africa with Operation Wallacea, a group that runs biological and conservation research around the world. The work, undertaken with experienced ecologists, is designed to assist local communities and to make practical changes in conservation. So we decided to go to Africa so we could do a bit of conservation research on Lake Malawi and other parts of Tanzania. Um, it was mainly to research a special type of fish species they have there that undergoes a speciation. The boys put their hand up for the job with the encouragement of their biology teacher Aaron Everett. Some of the boys say they want to go on to work in the field of science. We will be spending five days doing water quality sampling and some other research around the lakes there, as well as learning Swahili, teaching English and coming up with a sustainability plan for the area. It seemed like such an amazing opportunity. Yeah, it's not every day you get offered a trip to Africa. And also uh, marine biology interests me quite a lot. So Students will learn to dive and take fish surveys in Lake Malawi and will stay in the village to learn the language. The students still need to fundraise about $30,000 before they embark on their journey next year. It covers for each of us a cost of two and a half grand for um, the Operation Wallacea cost as well as plane tickets and spending money in like malaria shops type. They have been fundraising since June with movie nights and cheese roll sales and are still looking for businesses and individuals who want to get involved as donors. Roselle LeBone, The South Today. It was only a matter of time before one of Dunedin's road riding skateboarders impacted with a vehicle. Yesterday a 20 year old skateboarder was hurt when he collided with a van. The skateboarder suffered moderate injuries after being hit at the intersection of Cumberland and Dundas streets around midday on Tuesday. Ambulance staff provided treatment at the scene and then transported the young man and his skateboard to the emergency department at Dunedin Hospital. The alert over toxic algae in the Matara River has been lifted after testing this week, showed reduced algal levels. However, people have been warned to remain vigilant. Sharon Rees has more. This species of toxic algae, called Formidium, was detected in the lower to mid areas of the Matoda River last month but recent monitoring has shown reduced levels, opening the river again to swimmers and anglers. In November, Environment Southland's Nick Ward said the Matoda is prone to the algae, and with low river levels and warm weather, the algae is expected to grow and increase again. The Matara is a place where it's just prime conditions, um, just because of the system. Uh, where we get this, this, this um, toxic algae growing, um, so it's those cobbly areas um, that really likes to grow on, so those riffle areas rather than pools and it just seems to be that perfect storm where you get the right conditions at the right time so then this occurs. River users are still being urged to remain vigilant and avoid contact with toxic algal mats. Once the algae has been detected, Environment South and regularly monitors levels in the area. For more information on affected areas and to identify the algae, visit es.govt.nz. Sharon Rees, The South Today. Communications Minister Claire Curran yesterday released a report outlining the digital divide in New Zealand. The report shows there is a sizeable digital divide between rich and poor in New Zealand. Minister Curran says the government will determine what tech skills Kiwis need to be ready for the jobs of the future with the help of an advisory group. She believes digital technologies have the potential to make the country more prosperous and to create economic growth throughout New Zealand. 
the UNESCO Chair of Refugee Integration is visiting Dunedin. Professor Alison Phipps, OBE, is described as an outspoken activist and spoke before an appreciative crowd this afternoon. She's on the University of Glasgow staff, but Alison Phipps, OBE, appears almost at home speaking in the Edinburgh of the South today. The topic of Professor Phipps' lecture is refugee stories from her homeland. I realised that the city of Glasgow was hosting, newly hosting, many refugees who were being dispersed as asylum seekers to live in Glasgow in our housing stock there. And it just was increasingly clear that this was a very difficult experience for them and many were ending up in the removal centre, the detention centre, just on the outskirts of Glasgow. So I, um, I heard a call for a volunteer and um, thought they wanted people who spoke languages, so I thought, OK, I can do that. This year, she's the adjunct professor of hospitality and tourism at Auckland's University of Technology. But in 2016, she was appointed thinker in residence at the EU Hawke Centre at the University of South Australia. However, the plight of refugees is her main passion. Um, so I volunteered in the detention centres and that was a really interesting and good way of really learning about both the brutalities of the detention um, system within my own country and in other countries. Professor Phipps enthralled the audience while sharing tales of refugees in Scotland and Europe. And speaking as the crowd entered, she had simple advice for anyone against welcoming migrants into a city. Those who say refugees take local people's jobs. When you put programs in place that are about good hospitality and integration of refugees in a local community, when you learn about the local context properly, what you then find is what is good for refugees is good for everybody. Alison Phipps commended Dunedin on the welcome the city has given to refugees in recent years. Daryl Bazer, The South Today. Still to come on The South Today, the council chambers in Rangiora get set for a Christmas tree festival and Dunedin's cadets celebrate their achievements throughout the year with an end of year parade. For all your news from the southern regions as it happens, go to our Facebook page. The South Today, connecting you with your community thanks to New Zealand On Air. They're part of the family, and like us, their health begins with what they eat too. So give them Radical Dog, made in New Zealand from all natural ingredients and real tart cherries, so it's high in antioxidants. It's a three-in-one superfood, giving them energy, flexibility and a healthy coat. With no fillers or nasty preservatives, they love them. It's the treat that can work wonders on every dog, no matter what their breed, age or health. Radical Dog, the new generation in dog food. What if? That's the question being asked about the future for the Dunedin waterfront. Discover more for yourself by visiting a new display on now at Toitu Otago Settlers Museum. There's information on offer and models that portray the vision. Plus there are opportunities to share your feedback on the ideas presented. The Dunedin Harbour Vision. What if? See the ideas and designs suggested for the Dunedin Harbour at Toitu Otago Settlers Museum. The University of Otago, New Zealand's only true collegiate university. The first year students, the history, the expectations of excellence are... Unfamiliar. G'day, I'm next door. Hi, next door. I'm Samantha Pascoe. No, you're not. I'm Josh, Clyde, Science. And you are? Sam, Hastings, Laura and Tang, Auckland, Commerce. Osaka, Greece, Classics. <laughs> ah, history. <laughs> At the Otago SPCA, our role is to make sure that all animals in Dunedin and the Otago region are being looked after properly. Otago SPCA offer a haven for animals in need and adoption opportunities for the community. We appreciate your interest and support. For help and advice, we're on call 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you have any concerns, give us a call. My elves and I just love coming to Alice Campbell's, that's my favourite shop. I always get good value here, and good boys really deserve good brands and good quality. Look at these teas. Local beaches on some of them too. This is only for the good boys, the old boys, the young boys. What about some bright shorts for the boys? Excellent. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. 
At the Hard to Find Bookshop, we sell quality books on all subjects from the rare to the recent, and where viable, we will come to you. We have a great reputation for integrity and honesty, so if you're downsizing or sorting an estate and have books to sell, contact us. Oh, help! Don't suffer in silence. Call Sunny Chin, Chi Master Body Technician for Structural Muscular Emotional Body Work. Phone 03 4250 606 for all your pain relief. Active interior design in Mornington are the curtain and blind experts. The team can even advise you on outdoor products like awnings and umbrellas and will ensure that everything is perfect. For interior design with flair, call Active to book your free in-home consultation or call into the showroom in Mornington. While you're relaxing this holiday season, Ready Lawn is available to help you with your lawn needs, big or small. We work so you don't have to. Call Ready Lawn today. Gillian's Care. They care for loved ones, families, friends and our community. At a time of bereavement, care and support makes all the difference. And Gillian's know this. They're here for you when you need it most. From advanced funeral planning to a service for your loved one, Gillian's will guide and assist you with your individual choices. Their legendary attention to detail and passion to get it right are second to none. Gillian's, caring for families in our community since 1962. Motor Trade Finance proudly brings you Rural Delivery. A look at the places and faces behind New Zealand agriculture. Tuesday evenings, 8.30, repeating Saturday morning at 8, and Sunday afternoons, 4.30. Welcome back. The Council Chambers in Rangiora are all set up for a Christmas tree festival with contributions from around North Canterbury. The South Today found out more. Rangiora's Council Chambers are the location for this year's North Canterbury News Waimakariri Christmas Tree Festival, along with more than 30 trees decorated by various community groups, schools and businesses. Yesterday's opening included Council staff performing Christmas carols in the foyer. The display runs until the week before Christmas, with members of the public able to vote for their favourite tree for a gold coin donation, with proceeds going to local charities. Rudy Adrian, The South Today. Last night, Dunedin's cadets held a parade, celebrating their achievements across the year. This year, the cadets were also honoured with a visit by New Zealand's Chief of Army. The South Today was there. Dunedin's Community Cadet Unit provides a chance for young people to see what it might be like to work in the military. Last night's end of year pass out parade included a change of unit commanders plus an inspection by the Chief of Army, Major General Kelly. Hamish King is just starting out as a cadet but already enjoys the military exercises. Probably the most fun part would definitely be all the exercises with it because it builds teamwork and leadership and I think that's pretty cool. Commander of the Dunedin Cadet Unit, Lieutenant Booth, says that cadets is a step up from scouts. It's similar in some ways but I always say it's like scouts on steroids or well, for the next level um, of scouts anyway. After you leave scouts you could quite easily come into, into our fold. Warrant Officer and Cadet of the Year Emily Atkinson feels that cadets have an opportunity to grow as young adults. It's designed to make sure that um, high schoolers are pushed to their limits but also in a safe and challenging environment um, where they can develop their leadership skills and sort of break out their shell, so to speak. Lieutenant Booth is keen to point out that cadets is not about training young people to fight in wars. Uh, we, we're not here to train soldiers, That's, um, let's, we have to get that straight. Uh, we are here to, to train youth for tomorrow. And while less than half of cadets actually end up in New Zealand's military, some, such as Cadet Lance Corporal Jamie Ferguson, know what role they would like to have in New Zealand's military. I want to go into the army as a medic, so this has kind of given me an insight into like choosing what to do. So, yeah. Dunedin's cadet unit is open to all young people to join when they are aged between 13 and 15. Rudy Adrian, The South Today. 
After the break on the South today, Southland Primary School pupils show their strength at the Might Attend Mega Tough Kid event. And the Tyree Dramatic Society takes on an old Christmas favourite. My elves and I just love coming to Alex Campbell's. That's my favourite shop. I always get good value here, and good boys really deserve good brands and good quality. Look at these teas. Local beaches on some of them too. This is only for the good boys, the old boys, the young boys. What about some bright shorts for the boys? Excellent. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. For three generations, the Kilpatrick family have ensured Jimmy's pies are still world famous in the South Island. Made to an old family recipe, Jimmy's pies have been one of New Zealand's traditional takeaway foods, prepared daily on the premises alongside a range of savouries, sausage rolls and cakes, Jimmy's pies are distributed throughout the Lower South Island. Jimmy's pies are sure to satisfy your travelling munchies. While you're relaxing this holiday season, Ready Lawn is available to help you with your lawn needs, big or small. We work so you don't have to. Call Ready Lawn today. What if? That's the question being asked about the future for the Dunedin waterfront. Discover more for yourself by visiting a new display on now at Toitu Otago Settlers Museum. There's information on offer and models that portray the vision. Plus, there are opportunities to share your feedback on the ideas presented. The Dunedin Harbour Vision. What if? See the ideas and designs suggested for the Dunedin Harbour at Toitu Otago Settlers Museum. Gillian's Care. They care for loved ones, families, friends and our community. At a time of bereavement, care and support makes all the difference. And Gillian's know this. They're here for you when you need it most. From advanced funeral planning to a service for your loved one, Gillian's will guide and assist you with your individual choices. Their legendary attention to detail and passion to get it right are second to none. Gillian's, caring for families in our communities since 1962. At the Otago SPCA, our role is to make sure that all animals in Dunedin and the Otago region are being looked after properly. Otago SPCA offer a haven for animals in need and adoption opportunities for the community. We appreciate your interest and support. For help and advice, we're on call 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you have any concerns, give us a call. Active interior design in Mornington are the curtain and blind experts. The team can even advise you on outdoor products like awnings and umbrellas and will ensure that everything is perfect. For interior design with flair, call Active to book your free in-home consultation or call into the showroom in Mornington. Helping New Zealanders to do more. Talk to MTF today. Suffer in silence. Call Sunny Chin, Chi Master Body Technician for structural, muscular, emotional body work. Phone 03 4250 606 for all your pain relief. Loss of collagen is the reason for those fine lines and wrinkles. Silverhorns Collagen Plus naturally supports your collagen levels, giving you younger, firmer looking skin, healthier, shinier hair and stronger nails. Joints, tendons, ligaments and cartilage all benefit from healthy collagen levels, the very foundation of structural health. Support collagen levels naturally with Collagen Plus by Silverhorn. Be quick, buy one now and get a second pack half price. Call now 0800 502 402.
Thanks for staying with us. Southland Primary School pupils proved just how tough they are today at the Mitre 10 Mega Tough Kid event. 40 primary schools from around the region came to Invercargill's Rugby Park to take part in the gruelling challenge. Sharon Rees has more. Southland Primary School pupils were ducking, diving, crawling and sliding today to show how tough they can be. The annual Mitre 10 Mega Tough Kid event was bigger and better this year with more obstacles and more pupils than previous years. It's basically an obstacle course, um, it's about one and a half k's long. Um, this is the fourth year we've run it, every year we try and jazz it up a bit so we've got some big new inflatables this year we haven't had previously. Um, numbers have grown too, we started off with 800 because we're a bit scared about how it might work so we've got 1550 here today. Sellers said the event was held at the beginning of summer, so pupils could wind down as they approached the end of the school year. It's pitched at this time of year deliberately um, as a reward thing that schools can offer for their kids. I guess it's hard for teachers, especially when it's so hot at this time of year. Once each of the different age groups had passed the finish line, it was time for the parents, teachers and even some police officers to have a go. The pupils sat in the stands cheering them on while they were racing down water slides and battling their way through inflatable obstacles. While this group of police officers wished their own physical test had some inflatables, they acknowledged the difficulty of the course. I'm not sure I have to do the police test in that again any day. Hard work. While there were some red faces crossing the finish line, these Southern pupils definitely proved themselves to be the toughest kids around. Sharon Reese, The South Today. The beloved children's classic Bad Jelly the Witch is this year's Tyree's D Dramatic Society Christmas production. Filled with in-jokes for adults and Spike Milligan's offbeat sense of humour, the show has always played well with New Zealand audiences. Tree, tree, one, two, three, please grow very big for me. For some, it tree, wouldn't be Christmas tree, without a production of the family favourite Bad Jelly the Witch. And no play by Spike Milligan of the Goons fame would be complete without a healthy dose of his classic wordplay. Fiddle doodle dee, I'm a little flea. I ran up Daddy's trousers and bit him on the. I play Dingle Mouse, the Sun, the Dog, and Silly Sausage, the Grasshopper. Sometimes I sort of just make it up on the spot if it's needed, but. One of the parts, I just go woof. Six performers and director Brian McCormick are taking the most recent Tim Bray stage adaptation of the show to Mosgill. It was first seen on the stage at the Pump House Theatre in Takapuna in 2010. In a play that at school I was a child and I feel like that really helped me develop being like childish because she's like five. I can include a childlike flair in it, luckily. I heard chuckling behind me, can we stop that? <laughs> the ties to the show are particularly strong in New Zealand, where Bad Jelly had its first major success on morning radio, and a whole generation of Kiwi children grew up with Milligan's narration. Yeah, my mum used to love listening to the Sunday mornings on the radio. I can't say I personally had, but my mother had. <laughs> the play has been produced more than 100 times in New Zealand. It follows in the vein of classic fairy tales as young Tim and Rose are captured in the forest by the evil witch Bad Jelly and must make their way home with the help of characters like Sir Nobonk and King Twit. Bad Jelly the Witch will be staged at Mosgill's Fire Station Theatre from December 9 to 16. Roselle Lebone, The South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on The South Today. King's High School students travelling to Tanzania and Malawi next July are counting fish species and will be spending time at a Tanzanian school. The alert over toxic algae in the Matara River has been lifted after testing this week showed reduced levels of the algae. And UNESCO Chair of Refugee Integration, Professor Alison Phipps, OBE, is described as an outspoken activist in Spoken Dunedin this afternoon. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome, Paul Gorman. What have you got for Hi, us in tomorrow's Melissa. paper? Uh, we've got a strong story about uh, safety of power poles. Um, today, the third one in three months has collapsed in Alexandra, so we're having a look into what's caused that. 
Um, of course, there's also an important story in the Tyree with the Mosgiel water, uh, and um, Mosgiel residents are not happy that they're going to be having Dunedin water. Uh, so we're looking into that again a bit more, and there's a national report out today too about our drinking water nationwide. Uh, I think it's 20% is uh, deemed undrinkable, um, which is concerning. Yeah, and I and believe a common complaint was Mosgiel people were worried about the taste. Yeah, the chlorination, yeah. I guess, and cups of tea in Dunedin don't necessarily taste as good as elsewhere. Yeah. Of that. Uh, and uh, cruise ships, uh, nine in the next eight days. Uh, town's full of visitors today, and we've got the big one coming in next week, the Ovation of the Seas. This is the one that has got the norovirus outbreak on at the moment. Um, so we'll be watching what happens with that I guess it wouldn't be very nice being stuck on a cruise ship being that sick so no we don't want to silly don't want it coming into Dunedin no either. no that's right yeah <laughs> hopefully by next week things will be better on that front so wonderful thank you okay, Paul thanks. and now time for a look at tomorrow's weather this weather update is proudly brought to you by Silverhorn Sportsville starting with today's southern view taken off the University of Otago campus Looking at the situation, the anti-cyclone which has dominated our weather for the last few weeks is leaving, allowing low pressure systems to develop in the Tasman Sea. And to the southern, looking to the south, northeasterly winds prevail with high cloud increasing for all. Balcolutha can expect 25 degrees, Catlins a touch cooler on 20, Gore and Lumsden are predicted to reach 25. Heading to central, moderate north northerlies across the area with Alexandra predicted to hit 30. Slightly cooler in Queenstown, fine in 27. Tiana is expecting just 20 with freshening northerlies, while Wanaka should reach 28. And looking up north, it's going to be cooler on the coast. Omaru can expect breezy northeasterlies, fine and 21. Amaramo is aiming for 29 degrees and fine, and those in Timaru should plan for breezy northeasterlies and 21, while Twizel should be fine in 28. Here in Dunedin tonight, cloudy with moderate northeasterlies with an overnight low of 10 degrees. Tomorrow, low cloud breaking in the morning, clearing early afternoon to a fine and sunny day with fresh breezy northeast winds 21 and 13. And it's warm on Friday with moderate northerly winds increasing. Some brief rain late in the afternoon, 27 and 15. And in Invercargill tonight, some cloud with an overnight low of 12 degrees. Tomorrow, warmer northerly winds, sl slowly freshening, fine weather, high cloud, cloud, 24 and 14. And cloudy on Friday with some outbreaks of light rain later, warm with moderate northwesterly winds, 20 and 14 degrees. And that's our show for this Wednesday. For the latest news from the South Today team, you can follow us on Facebook and at channel39.co.nz. We take a look back at the month of January for the year that was. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening. Ka kite anō. Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear.
Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.